In this video, we're looking at how do we apply SQL statements in Delphi, focusing particularly on the insert statement from SQL side, and this is a part of the information technology grade 12 CAPS syllabus. Now, as I said, there are lots of ways that you can insert data into a database from Delphi side, and one of those ways is using the SQL statement, using the, particularly the, the insert SQL statement. Um, but before we get into an example, let's just recap of the key things to remember when using SQL in Delphi. First of all, a reminder about those components that you need to use. If you are using a database with Delphi, then you tend to use an ADO connection, an ADO table, and a data source. Now, remember, we do not need the ADO table. We are using the ADO query for our SQL statements. Um, so you don't need to worry about the ADO table. And the reason for that is because in the properties of this ADO query, there is an SQL property which works very similar to the memo control. So as you had memo.lines.add, the same thing you've got SQL.add, which in other words, you're going to add lines of SQL statements to it. Um, but we would recommend that you first clear the SQL uh, property just because maybe a previous button had put in SQL statements you don't want to multiple SQL, SQL statements to occur after each other so we first clear it um, we actually close it first then we clear it and then you start adding your lines of SQL statements and when it comes to the insert because the insert is quite cumbersome there's a lot of data that you normally have to give in um, it's a good idea to break it up into separate lines it makes your coding a lot easier it makes you avoid any any mistakes so things that you've got to be aware of and lastly in our previous video when we dealt with the select statement we had to use something called the open property where you open the ADO query to let it run and show the results now because we are doing an insert it, there's no results to be seen it's simply doing an instruction it's inserting a value so that is why when we do an insert we run the exec SQL statement after that. What we can do after that, however, is I would recommend that you display the results using a simple select statement so that you can see if the actual insert was done successfully. Let's have a look at an actual example. Here we have a form where we're going to insert data. Uh, just like we had in the select statement video, I'm just going to recap the data module that we've got over there. There's a data module, and there we can see there's an ADO connection that is connected to our music database. Now, instead of an uh, ADO table connected to that connection, we have a ADO query, and it is connected to that ADO connection and we have a data source that is connected to the query and on this form over here we have a DB grid and this DB grid is set to the data source that is in that DM music underscore U data module. Now the name of the data module is DM music. The name of the file is DM music underscore U and that is why we have added DM music underscore U to the top of the form under users. So we've already added that library file there so that we can use the components in this data module, even though it's in a separate file, we can now access them from this form. Now, when I add an element to this database, I'm simply going to add a simple record. I'm not going to worry about these elements at the moment. Let's first get one working, and from there we can try one where we actually can put in data in Delphi, and via these components we can insert the data into the database. So let's just look at a very simple insert we're going to do. Now, because all the data is in that other data module called DM Music, we are simply going to say with DM music to begin and we can go DM music dot with all the other commands but it's going to take a lot of time this is probably a lot easier so what are we going to do well as I said the first step is with our query which I think is query music we need to make sure that we first close it and then our query we are going to go to the SQL property and make sure that it's clear because we don't know if another button or component or event has occurred where they've put SQL code in there already. Once we've done that, now we can add our code. So here is where we're going to insert the, make sure you spell it correctly, music.sql, here we're going to insert the SQL statement. Now, if you remember your insert, it's insert into 
and then the name of the table. We're going to insert it to the owner table. And then in brackets, you specify the field names that need to be have values inserted into. So we're going to insert into the owner ID. We're going to insert into the owner surname. We're going to insert into the owner first name. And we're going to put some more in, but are you noticing how it's getting quite long? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to terminate my string there and I'm inserting, I've added that line to the SQL property. And what I can continue to do on the next line here is I'm going to write another music.sql.add and whatever I add now will just add as a brand new line underneath it. And so we can continue writing and it makes life a lot easier to break it up into its small parts. Well, you notice first of all as well that that, that bracket I haven't terminated that bracket over there is obviously is that bracket, but I haven't terminated because there are more fields that I want to insert into, it's like the grade, the class, if they are a disc jockey, I think that's spelled correctly, disc jockey, and their date of birth. Now those are all the fields that I want to insert into the database. So that's the next line. And that, well, what after that, if you remember your SQL statements, we're going to add, well now we say the word values. Now here is where I just want to stop before I continue. Now just be aware that because you are adding lines in separate different statements, be very aware at the end. Sometimes you may need a space or something like that because otherwise it might not work correctly. Maybe for example if you have a situation like that where you've got a word and then you just start the new word on a new line, it looks fine there. But what it's going to do is it's going to add that values onto the end. So now it's date of birth values. Obviously in this case we had to have a bracket there so it probably would be fine but just be aware of your spaces. I would recommend that you just put a space at the end of each line just make sure that nothing on the next line clashes with the, the, the line above it. And what are we inserting? The values and we're going to insert a 71 for the owner ID. We're going to insert a string for Mr. for the surname or actually we're inserting long for the surname and the first name will be Mr. for Mr. Long. I'll pretend that's my first name. My grade, let, it's a number, so let's put myself as grade 11. My class, that must be, let's make it a B. Uh, disc jockey, that is a true or false statement, so I'm going to say yes I am. Mr. Long's a DJ. And then my date. Remember, dates must be in a hash format. So let's go here first, so 2000, or rather let's just start with the day the month and yes I am that old not really I'm just lying now always lie about your age so there is the date don't forget that all these in the SQL statement are in a bracket I've got an opening bracket there but I don't have a closing bracket inside this string that I've constructed so there that goes into owner ID that goes into surname that goes into first name grade class disc jockey date of birth. That should be fine. And then remember with an SQL statement that's not a select, we don't say dot .open, but now we are going to say exit, I don't know how you pronounce that, exact SQL, something like that. So basically executing the SQL and then that should work. Now we don't know, it'll basically do something, we don't know what if it's actually done anything. So it's always a good idea to run some code again. We're going to just say dot close again and we're going to say query music dot sql dot clear so we clear everything query music dot sql so there's no sql in that statement at the moment and we're going to add a new statement that simply says select star from owner and just to make it nice I'm going to say order bar which means it sorts it bar owner ID. So there is my SQL statement and we are going to then open it because this is a select statement in this case. So if we run this code it should work, it should give 
insert a value into the database and then it will display all the results in that DB grid. Let's test if it works. So here's the program. We click add and there's all the data. If I go all the way to the bottom, ah, there's Mr. Long. I didn't put in the contact details or the email address in my insert statement. It simply put in the owner name, surname, the grade, the class, and hopefully the date of birth and the disk jockey. So it put in the data that I want to insert into it. So there we go, we can see it works. Now let's pretend that we don't want to make it static and just type it in like that. We actually want to refer to the values that were in these edit boxes. If you look over here, these values over there, there's EDT name, there's EDT class, EDT first name, all these fields, they must be now put into this edit box or this database, sorry. So I'm just going to look at this code here. Now everything else should be fine. Let's just pretend we're going to insert this as number 72 because it's a new record, so the ID must be different. So instead of long, we are now going to insert whatever is inside EDT. If you remember correctly, the surname was EDT surname. EDT surname dot text. But can you see that EDT surname is in blue, which means it's not referring to the value inside that. This is still part of the string. So I actually have to uh, terminate the string there by the double quote and add EDT surname. Whenever we're referring to our components, the general idea is try and make sure that they are in black and the stuff that's in the SQL statement is in blue. So the contents of that variable or component will then be con put into the statement. Same for Mr. We're going to change that and get rid of that. And in between here, we are going to add EDT and I think it's first name dot text. So that is in between there. And I'm going to keep going across here. Now, this one over here, we don't need double quotes. So I'm simply going to terminate the string there and add and then add again and then close. So in between the two pluses, we're going to add whatever's in that edit box for the grade. Now, what is it? The grade is in a spin edit, so we just have to get the value. So the spin edit would be STD. I think it would be grade dot value. But remember, this is a whole string that we're constructing. So we've got to convert this value, which is an integer. We'd have to, oh, what's happening here? We'd have to convert it into to string into a grade. I've gone and quickly typed the rest for you so you just save time. So the class, because it's a text field, we've got it between the double quotes there. So there's the class of text. Now the DJ, remember that's a checked field. So before we can convert it to a string, we need to say bool to string. So whatever's in that checkbox, whatever, if it's checked or not, it'll be bool to string. And then remember the date from the date edit box, we must make sure that we've got the hashes on either side. So that should be fine. So now what is happening for this insert is whatever I type in here in these values over here in these components, they will then be added so that we can customize our Delphi program to work better. So let's have a look and see if it looks. So here's the form. So if I click on the add button, I've already populated the data over here. If I click on add, those, it shows us everything. Let's go double check at the bottom and there we can see all those details have been added to the database. So just a reminder about the code, we use the with dm just so that we don't have to type dm.querymusic.close every time. So we do that. You close the query, you go to the SQL, you clear it, you add in your insert statement, make sure you type it in correctly. I would recommend you type it in like you would normally and then after that then you can break it up into the parts that need to refer to certain components or variables even. And then after you've done that I would run a new SQL query where you select the data so you can just see if it was inserted correctly. Remembering with an insert you end with the execute SQL but with the select you just open. If you've forgotten how to do an insert statement then go to our YouTube channel, go and look at how we do it and as well as other SQL statements. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, we'd love to hear your comments. And remember don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.
For more examples, go to Study Opportunities and your teacher can order the textbooks, which will be available from 2015.